Hi, welcome back to the Gapster channel. I've got today with me the Duke Audio A100. It's a small amplifier that actually can work as a subwoofer as well. I put it to the test. I put it on the bench test, measure its frequency response, distortion, how much power it's got. They claim to have 300 watts per channel. We'll see about that. And also, uh, this thing can, uh, it's got some massive heat sinks. They provide you with a 48 volt power supply, which is very unusual. So they're pushing this thing to the max, and that's probably why they're claiming so much power out of it. And uh, what I really love about this uh, A100 is that you can use it, like I said, as a subwoofer amplifier. So you can put it in mono mode and you could use it on a sub mode. And this way you can just, if you have an old sub that maybe the power uh, uh, amplifier of it broke down, or maybe you're building a DIY subwoofer. This could be a really good amplifier that's going to run your subwoofer. And guess what? This is actually 200 US dollars, but right now they have a coupon for 50% off. I was told that they're really excited about this product and they think this is quite uh, an achievement for them and they're really pushing it so they're actually for a short while they're offering a 50 percent discount i've never seen them offer that much discount so you can get this for a hundred dollars and you'll be amazed what you can get like I, when i opened it up this thing is heavy like uh, it's got some it's very well built it's got some decent specs and you know for a hundred bucks delivered like wow like i don't know how they can do that I'm trying to keep everybody included on my channel. I have different price points of things, so not everybody can afford the big expensive stuff. Or maybe someone just wants to run a subwoofer and they just want some small amplifier and that could be the trick to do that. In any ways, let's open this thing up and let's have a look inside and let's measure. I so brought it here on the bench to see exactly uh, what's it made of and how does it behave when we actually test it uh, properly. So uh, that's why you're here on the Gapster channel because I like to actually measure things, not just talk about how beautiful they are and how nice they look. So let's see exactly how does this thing measure up. I am using the Analog Discovery 3 by Digilent. Uh, nothing state of the art, but this thing works like a charm and works amazingly well with the Audio Analyzer Suite, which is a software that I've talked about before. It's actually, it's a free software that you can download as well. I made a whole video about this because if you're interested in something like that, you should watch it. I'll put a link uh, for it in the description below. So first thing we're gonna write as a scope just to see how the signal is behaving and it looks fairly decent. Now, something I like to do is I'm gonna like to check uh, both channels together just to make sure that the same, uh, that they are at the same volume level. They're not one that's higher than the other. And they look pretty decent. They look like they're tracking pretty well. Uh, when I put the volume a bit down, there's just a tiny bit of a difference, but not much. And then it's actually tracks fairly well after that. My resistors are only rated at 100 watts and they're like super, super hot. So I had to wrap them with some uh, moist, uh, cold uh, towels because I don't have 300 watt resistors. So we're gonna have to run this thing at short little periods of time. Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go and check out the frequency response. And we're just gonna see how that tracks throughout the spectrum. So press run here and just gonna start plotting. The idea is you want to get as, as a line as flat as possible so you don't have like a dip into frequencies and, and, and so forth. I'm just going to zoom in on that while this is plotting. So far it's very, very straight. That's pretty, pretty good actually. That's really good. Uh, it's fairly flat all the way till it, it's about 14K or so. And then from 14K, there's a tiny, tiny bit of, uh, I would say that's nothing. That's like half a dB, uh, a little bit up. That's pretty much uh, nothing. So I would say this is an excellent frequency response. It's fairly flat. Uh, I've seen way worse than that in most of the time. So to get to this level, that's pretty decent, I would say. Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna check the harmonic distortion versus power. So let's do that test and see how that behaves. So far our distortion is staying below uh, 0.2. We are at basically 
Don't worry about that. That's just uh, when the, the instrument is actually switching between frequencies. It does that sometimes. But so far, we're, st we're at 15 watts. We're at 0.05 percent. 50 watts. Uh, all the way to 100 watts. I'm just going to stop it at that. And uh, so let's have a quick look at this. Uh, zoom in on this uh, this graph here. Like I said, uh, don't worry about that little up and so on. Uh, the main thing is basically those numbers here. So basically at 100 watts, we got to 0.1% distortion. And if we just move along and uh, let's go to 50 watts, that's like a good, at 50 watts we have 0.07% and keeps going, going, only when you get to almost 100 watts, 90 watts, still at 0.09. At 100 watts, this is when it got to 0.1. So it's fairly decent, you know, this is still, a, this is a class D app, so that's fairly decent for, for what it is. I, I say it's fairly uh, decent uh, distortion numbers. The fact that you, yeah, most of the time you're not going to run it more than a 50 watt level. So at that you basically, even like say 75 watts, you're at 0 0.08. So that's, that's fairly decent. All right, this time I'm going to set my analyzer suite to go up to 300 watts. Okay, so this time I'm going to run the same test, except I'm not going to limit it to 100 watts. We're going to see how far this thing goes. And the whole idea is to see if that 300 watt uh, claim is correct. So we're going to uh, get this guy uh, running. And here he goes. And again, it's going to start plotting slowly. And uh, we're just going to keep an eye basically on those numbers right here. So at the beginning now, it's still running around. Uh, this is low wattage still. It's going to get interesting to see after the 100 watts uh, what's actually usable uh, after that. Again, don't worry about that blip here. It's just changing frequencies. Again, the focus should still be around here. So we're at 8 watts, it's 0.03%. At 20 watts, 0.05%. 50 watts, 0 0.07. 100 watts, 0 0.1. So, okay. So here you go. This, it, it stopped at... Uh, so we got to 10% of distortion, really, the, yeah, basically after that, it's garbage, you don't want to listen to that. So realistically, we have 140 watts of power. And, you know, that's pretty decent. Again, I wouldn't want to see if 10% uh, is a lot. Uh, so let's bring it down to where maybe like 2.1%. Okay. So 120, so at 111 watts, it's 0.5%. And after the 120 watts, you're getting to 2%. So realistically, it's 100 watt per channel. If you want to keep your distortions low, the maximum, I would say it's 120 watts per channel, I would say, something like that. So that's probably what I would uh, realistically rate it. Now, don't get hang up. You really don't need that much power. Even if you're getting 120 watts, that's a lot because uh, you really don't need more than that. Taking this thing apart was not an easy task. I had to really, some of the screws were extremely hard and it looks like I have to take all these knobs out. So just one. And then on top of that, you've got screws here. So we have to unscrew those four so we can get this thing to loosen up. There we go. There we go. Now we're going to push it through. Okay, just very gently here. That's it. Let's see what we got here. Oh, that's pretty good. That's exposed pretty much everything. 
So let's have a look at this thing. Uh, there's a couple op amps here that you can see, and these are replaceable in case you'd like to venture and, and change them and put something different. So you've got some options here to play with if you like. Uh, looks like some really, it's pretty well built. This is the uh, power supply section here, and uh, the, uh, the chip is on the back. The chip is on the back, it's underneath this heat sink. It's a Texas Instrument 3255. And it's also the heat sink is attached to the case and the whole case becomes a heat sink. And that's a heavy duty heat sink. I believe because they are really pushing this guy to the limit because they have him running at 48 volts. So basically you need all the heat sinks you can get to get it pushed to the limit. The op amp user that comes with it are the NE5532. It's got some decent resistors. Oh, oh no, I'd say it's fairly decently built. I think for, I don't know how they can sell this for $100. Shipped to you, like, I, I, that's kind of mind boggling. How do they make profit? I have no clue. So here is the front. You can see you can run it in mono or stereo. And then you've got the frequencies. You can set them to flat, means it's just normal like a stereo amplifier, or you can put them on a sub, and now you're using the subwoofer, and you can adjust the subwoofer, subwoofer frequencies and, and uh, volume and, and so forth. This one is the auxiliary volume and basically controls the auxiliary output on the back, and that's just your regular volume. If we flip it around, and uh, we have a look at the back. So we can see here, we can get a better view of the heat sink that's on this uh, amplifier. Also, this is the auxiliary out I was talking about. It's like a, it's a jack kind of uh, out, output and you can connect that, say, for example, for an active speaker, if you like, or you can control another subwoofer. Uh, this is your audio input. As I said earlier, there's only one input, and it's probably one of the downfall. This is not an amplifier that you want to use it for multiple inputs. It's more for a one task, basically. And this is your speaker outputs. And that's just your DC, basically, volt. You can go from 24 to 48. They give you the 48 volt, uh, basically, power supply, and that's a really good thing. Often they don't, so you're basically you're running it at its maximum potential. So here you have it. It's actually overall, it's a fairly decent amplifier. So it's an amplifier that you could use it for multiple things and uh, something you can try. Uh, I'm trying to keep also on my channel things that most people can't afford, you know, the multi thousand dollar system that we're using. So trying to keep more, uh, the whole idea is to open up for everybody to join in and to slowly build up. And as you uh, move along with life, you can build up and, and, and build something bigger and better. But this is an amazing start, I think. You can't go wrong for $100 to start with an amplifier like this for whatever you're using it for. You still have to listen and, and try to figure out if you like the sound of it at the end, despite whatever measurements you get. So I listened to the Duke Audio A100, and it actually sounded pretty decent. You know, this is not a super hi-fi quality uh, amplifier that you're gonna run it for the rest of your life, but for the price, it's pretty decent. It has some fairly good sound. It sounds, I would say, uh, very just you know neutral it wasn't like over the top or anything now sure you can play with the uh, buttons and, and control the uh, frequency a little bit but that's uh, that's up to you but on a flat mode it sounded fairly decent i think you would be very happy with the with the sound between listening to it and the measurements i think overall duke audio did a decent job especially at such an amazing price for a hundred dollars while this 50% discount is still happening. I'm gonna put in, uh, in the corner up here a link about my recent uh, Gapster TD1 DAC that I actually launched uh, not too long ago. And in the corner here, about 10 songs that are so holographic and great imaging that you'd like to test them on your hi-fi system. It's gonna make a whole world of a difference with your system. For a little speaker, if you'd like to subscribe to my channel, my Patreon is in the link below if you'd like to support me. So take care and I hope to see you again.